Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry and today we will be joined by Sam Knight, the Director of Product Management here at the company. Today, Sam will be talking to us about the new dialogues and search features in Geographic Calculator version 2023. All right, Sam, take it away. One of the more subtle features in Geographic Calculator 2023 that we're going to be taking a look at is uh, the replacement for the GeoCalc dialogues. Now, the GeoCalc dialogues are something found in both the desktop version of the Geographic Calculator as well as the GeoCalc SDK for any of our OEM partners. Now, the GeoCalc dialogues, what they actually do for us is they give us the access to the database of all the coordinate systems found in Geographic Calculator and the GeoCalc SDK. They're easily accessible from any of the jobs in the Geographic Calculator that have a coordinate system control on them, which is most of them. Um, we can simply double click on any of the blue boxes labeled system or uh, units or vertical or datum, any of those. Um, they're also accessible under the data source menu for all of the various components of geodetic parameters that we're going to have access to. So here on the interactive job, I'm just going to double click on the system box. And it's asking me a familiar filter if I would like to use a map to uh, narrow down the selections that I have. I'm going to say no, and we're going to take a look at the master list of everything that we have all in one place without a filter for the first step. Um, now, those of you that have been using this for a long time are going to see a few visual changes right away. Um, there are some visual changes, but there's also a number of functional enhancements uh, to these dialogues. They're still uh, movable and resizable. Um, you can still see all of the parameters for everything that's in the database. So that's somewhere north of 5,000 coordinate systems, 1,800 transformations for uh, datums and uh, coordinate systems, uh, 100 some odd linear units, and, and so on. Many, many entities in this database. Um, what we're looking at is how we navigate through these. Um, so one of the major new features that we've uh, added is two different ways of navigating this database. Um, one is through a live filtered search and the other is through the older more traditional uh, folder based uh, categorization that we have. So if you like the way the geographic calculators dialogues have worked and you are not interested in seeing something new then all you need to do is toggle off this little setting in the upper right hand corner to include the subfolders. That puts it into exactly the same way it's always functioned, where you are looking into a single folder at a time. Uh, you have only the things that are in the folder tree in the right, depending on wherever you are looking in the geopolitical organization. Uh, if you toggle on this setting to include the subfolders, what that will do is it will show you the contents of whatever the folder you have selected is, but it will also show you the contents of all of the subfolders beneath that level in the tree down the left hand side of the screen. If I go up to the very top level uh, coordinate systems folder, that will show us all 5,000 some odd coordinate systems that we have in the database in one very long list. Uh, it does break that up into pages and you can see those uh, down on the lower right hand uh, chunk of the screen. There are some various arrow buttons for navigating between those pages. Typically you're not going to want to be looking at all 5,000 of those systems at once though and you're probably going to have some idea of what you're looking for and that's where the new search tools come in. So the search uh, used to be across the bottom of this panel and now the search tool is on the top left. Um, for many people, search has become the dominant way that they navigate through here. Um, and the search in here has become much more flexible and it's mimicking some of the functions that we've had available for a few years in Geographic Calculator Online uh, or GeoCalc Online. Uh, that's our online uh, geodetics repository uh, with some calculation functions. Um, the search tool up here uh, is a simple string based search under the search type you'll see various options whether we want to search across all of the fields that are searchable or if we just want to focus on something like the name or the remarks. Uh, I'm just going to leave this set on all for now and I'll do a very simple search in here for NAT83 and you'll see as I type those letters in the search happens for me in real time automatically. So we have a collection of Canadian systems, American systems, Mexican systems, and continent-wide systems here uh, in uh, North America, uh, which is where NAT83 is, is located. 
that filters down the longer I type the string in there for the search. I don't actually have to click search, it just starts filtering that list by itself. Um, this is also very uh, useful when we have the include subfolders list set. If I untick that and I'm at that top level of the search folder, you'll notice there's nothing there to search. I'm only searching within that particular folder. If I go down under North America, you'll see just those two items that are within uh, the North America level. If I click include subfolders, I'm now searching everything, all of the coordinate systems just within anywhere in the North American region. So it's a new, more flexible way to complete these searches when you might be needing to search below uh, a certain folder in the tree and you don't necessarily want to be searching the entire globe. Um, this is the single mode of the search. Now another new very powerful way of searching in here, I'm just going to X out of that search and get back to the whole top level list under coordinate systems. A uh, very powerful new way of searching is the advanced search. This allows us to search by multiple criteria at once. So let's say for example I'm searching for a coordinate system that I know some of the parameters of but I don't have the entire list. Maybe I know the datum and that datum is NAT83. I'll type that in for the datum and enable the checkbox to filter by that. I also know the projection, so I know that it's a transverse mercator and I'm going to filter based on what I do know about this coordinate system. So I know that it's centered on the longitude uh, 69 degrees west or minus 69 and so I'll simply type that into the field and now I'm going to complete a search on these three things at once. So I know the datum and I know the projection and I know the central meridian of that uh, or longitude of natural origin as we call it here. Uh, when I execute that search it will go down through all 5000 coordinate systems and give me just the systems that match with those parameters. And you'll see in this case it actually returns me several coordinate systems because of the variance of NAT83 uh, used across uh, the United States and Canada and then different versions of those datums in each of those. Um, so it's a much more flexible and much more powerful searching tool. Once we've drilled down to the coordinate systems that we're interested in looking at and we want to actually inspect the parameters, this is another new place that we're going to see some changes. So if I select one of these and I right click on it, I'll say view info and this will open up the, the new uh, individual details dialogues themselves. So the, the details uh, are where we uh, look at all of the, the nitty gritty parameters. So in the case of a projection like I have here, we'll see all of the, uh, the parameters that define it mathematically. We'll see the horizontal datum, any of the remarks, the area of use, and so on. Uh, we also have the identifiers, uh, which are cross-references into other database and remarks. And in the case of any item that's an EPSG uh, object, it has a history panel. Uh, that has a little bit of information about its revision during its time in the EPSG database. Now these dialogues have all the same information they used to have, but they're coming at us in a little bit of a new format that's a little bit easier to work with if you're going to be drilling down and inspecting the individual parameters. So uh, within the dialogues, these used to present as a series of cascading dialogues. If I opened the coordinate system and then I uh, opened the information for the uh, geodetic coordinate system beneath that, that would open up a new window. So I've just clicked on that info panel and you'll see what happens is now instead of opening a new window on top of the previous details window, uh, now it has replaced the previous details window. This works a little bit more like browsing web pages, if you will. If I then uh, open up the parameters of the horizontal datum, and uh, let's keep going here, I'm going to go right into the parameters of the ellipsoid. Now I've gone through several windows. Uh, in the older versions of these dialogues, I would have a whole series of cascaded new windows taking up space on my monitor. Uh, what we're doing now is replacing each of those previous windows, but there's a little bit of a navigation history as well. If you take a look at the top right, you'll see that there are back buttons over by uh, the, the X to close the window. If I click the single triangle, that's going to take me back one. And if I click the double triangle, that's going to take me all the way back to the parent object that I selected. And in this case, that was the projection uh, NAT83 uh, 2011 on UTM Zone 19. Um, anywhere uh, in that navigation uh, from the parent coordinate system all the way down to the ellipsoid, if I click the X, that will simply close me back out to the window where we do the browsing and the searching and all those types of uh, operations. 
Um, these are um, all saved in a history that we can access under the recent category. So once we've made a selection uh, of a coordinate system, uh, if we then come back in here at any time and we filter by uh, the recent list, you'll see we can get back to those items that we have already selected once uh, or twice in the past. And because this is a fresh installation, I only have that one coordinate system that I just selected a moment ago. Um, we think you'll like most of these new uh, most of these new settings, and again, there is a little bit of uh, user choice in how these are going to work. Um, so if you if you prefer the old method where you don't want to navigate down through um, and see all of the the entities in these folders and the subfolders, all you need to do is toggle off that include subfolders box, and then you click through any of those uh, given folders just like we used to. And if you do like that method of using the search first. Just simply tick on uh, include subfolders and go on with your search. Sam, thank you so much for showing that to us. I know that our users will find it very helpful. To learn more about Geographic Calculator, please visit bluemarblegeo.com today. And as always, thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Ask the Experts, and we hope to see you next time.